All right then, so far we've seen one hook in this course and that is use state. And we use that to create some state for the component, but there's many other hooks that we can use in React. And one such hook that I wanna show you now is called use effect. Now this hook runs a function every render of the component. Now remember, the component renders initially when it first loads and it renders all of this to the DOM, but then it also happens when the state changes. It re-renders the DOM so it can update that state in the browser, okay? So this use effect hook is a way to run code on every render. And that can be useful for many different reasons, which we're gonna see later on. But for now, let's focus on how we can use it. So the first thing to do is to import it at the top from React. So after use state, we'll say use effect. And then down here, somewhere above the return statement, we're gonna use this hook. So all we need to do is say use effect like so. Now we don't store this in a constant. It doesn't return anything to us. All we need to do is pass as an argument a function. And this is the function that's gonna run every time there is a re-render. So once initially, when the component first loads, but thereafter, any time the data changes. So then all we're gonna do for now is do something like console.log, and then we'll say use effect ran. Now normally inside this function right here, inside use effect, we could do something like fetch data or communicate with some kind of authentication service. And those things are known as side effects in React. But for now, we're just doing this simple console log. So let's see if this works. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna inspect and I'm gonna clear out everything in the console. Then I'm gonna refresh. So notice we get this initially and that's because of the initial render. And remember this function runs for every render. So what happens if we change the data? Well, let's delete a block. That changes the data and use effect ran comes out again. And that's because this function fires on every render. And when we changed the data, it re-rendered this to the DOM. If we do it again, we get another one, okay? Now we can also access the state inside use effect. So if I wanted to output the blogs, for example, I could do console dot log and we'll output the blogs save that and give this a whirl i'm going to clear this and refresh so we get this again to begin with and the blogs which has all three of them in if we delete one then we get the blogs again now just two delete again etc all right now, one thing to be careful of is actually changing the state inside use effect, because think about it, you could end up in a continuous loop of renders. So initially, the component renders to the DOM, right? And that would trigger this function to run. That would then update the state and the state would change and that would trigger a re-render. And on that re-render, again, that triggers this function in use effect to run. We change the state that triggers a re-render. The re-render triggers this function. We change the state and you can see where this goes, so forth and so forth, and you end up in a continuous loop. Now, there are ways around this in some scenarios, but we'll probably see those later on. But this use effect hook is really, really useful for running any kind of code that you need to run at every render. And again, it can be used for things like fetching data. And we're gonna see that later on. But first of all, I wanna look at dependencies of use effect next.